Hello and welcome back to Fudge Muppet. It's Scott here today bringing you our latest Fallout 4 build, The Assassin. The Assassin is incredibly stealthy, very intellectual, and uses a wide variety of talents to adapt to whatever situation she finds herself in. She can lockpick and hack her way through anything and can also reprogram robots to do whatever she desires. This build uses very fast melee weapons and avoids using bullets, though you should still carry some sort of gun just in case. The Assassin is very very nimble and when it comes to combat she specializes in taking out large groups of targets in close quarters without being seen. Like our previous build the assassin only uses power armor when it is absolutely necessary so we'll leave any power armor optimization up to you. This build levels very quickly and while she lacks brute force she makes up for any lost melee damage with precision and surprise stealth attacks. Playing this build is extremely rewarding especially if you've just played our sniper build which which did all of its fighting from a long distance. The assassin gives you the suspense of a stealth character as well as the up close excitement that a melee build has. If you've never watched one of our Fallout 4 builds before, we have timestamp links in the description so you can navigate to each section in the video. If you need to review a section or skip through something, this makes it very easy. With that said, let's get into one of my favorite backstories so far. The assassin grew up in a well-educated family in Washington and lived a pretty good life throughout her entire Higher upbringing. Her mother and father both had high paying jobs in the financial services industry and her older brother who was 21 when she was 14 was working toward becoming a dentist. Two years later he succeeded and the assassin while only young was a high achiever herself. Her lowest exam mark of all time was a 93 in history and the assassin aced her way through many school years and excelled not only academically but also athletically. She was a small framed girl and didn't weigh much at all but she was incredibly coordinated and very fast. She would place first at every gymnastics competition in the state and was also quite the martial artist. The assassin had been learning a scrimmer and kickboxing since she was nine. And by the time she was 16, she had a reputation for being an absolute beast of a fighter. While she could fight well with her hands and feet, the girl felt much better with a weapon in her hand like a knife or baton. In grade 11, the assassin was doing incredibly well in all aspects of her life, except maybe socially. She never really had many friends and she considered most other people weak. She despised their lack of willpower. Eventually the assassin had turned 17 and was close to beginning her final year of schooling when she woke up one morning in the room of what felt like a solitary confinement prison cell. From here on the girl was put through years of physical training, mental conditioning and essentially indoctrination. She had been captured by a highly secretive intelligence organization who existed only on paper as a section of the DIA. Many people within the DIA didn't even have an idea where the department was even located and over time the young girl was transformed into an assassin. The group told her they were simply called the organization and they kept her in the dark about many things. She did not care however because now she considered them family. She was a trained killer and was used to do things the government would never be able to admit to. She was mainly assigned to kill those who were anti-war. Those who stood between the government's goals of driving the economy with conflict and acquiring the resources it needs. She would take out big figures before the influence could grow to an unstoppable level, but as years went by, the assassin was assigned a more inactive mission. She would still kill, but not as often. And most of her time was spent stalking people and reporting back her findings. She was fitted into society as a lawyer in Boston and actually married a man that the organization had prescribed. She seduced the man and told him a prepared lie about her entire existence and they ended up marrying shortly after. The two lived happily with the husband truly believing everything he knew about his wife was true and that during the day and busy nights, she was in her office working. While originally planted as a spy, the assassin did develop real feelings for the man and over time, she genuinely came to love him. She still would never tell him of her secret identity as her duty to the nation came before anything else. The two ended up having a child together and this fulfilled the assassin emotionally and also helped solidify her secret identity as a family woman. Eventually on October 23rd, the bombs began to fall and the assassin was rushed into Vault 111. The ties between her and the organization were broken and we all know what happens next. Fallout 4 builds on Fudge Muppet are going to keep faction and big quest storylines very vague, but we will be telling you the factions the assassin can end up working for. If for some reason you don't want to be aware of all of the joinable factions in Fallout 4, then skip through the faction choices sections using the 
timestamps in the description. With that said, let's get into the motives, perspectives, and factions of this build. Leaving Vault 111, the assassin is going to be very directionless and disoriented. She will use her talents as an intelligence professional to attempt to track down her son, and following leads, she will eventually explore the Freedom Trail and find the railroad. The railroad provide her with a lifestyle that is relatively similar to that of her past life, and she will decide to work for them while she has to. Our assassin isn't really morally inclined, but she will work with the railroad as she doesn't fit in anywhere else, and they provide a place to stay, resources to help find her son, and also keep her skills sharp. Your assassin can stay with and fit in with the railroad using a few moral adjustments, but our assassin is going to end up siding with the Institute. After discovering the Institute, she immediately appreciates their aspirations. She understands that sacrifice needs to be made to make the world a better place, and from her point of view, she used to kill so that citizens of the United States could prosper. By siding with the people who pull the strings of society, she truly feels at home. Her life has purpose once again. The assassin is going to step into the wasteland with two strength, three perception, one endurance, one charisma, ten intelligence, ten agility, and one luck. Remember, you're going to get the perception bobblehead straight away when you meet Preston Garvey, and this will make your perception four. Also, before you get this bobblehead, you're going to want to pick up the special book in Sanctuary and use it on strength, making this stat three. This will give us access to armor, and as always, we've got guides in the description on how to get the special bobbleheads and the special book. You'll of course want all of the bobbleheads as soon as possible. The assassin starts with two strength to represent her thinner frame and lack of brawn. She may be able to hit hard, but this power comes from technique and speed, not raw force. Strength is also not going to be heavily needed for this build as in the game her damage will come from the sneak attack multipliers from the ninja perk. The assassin has three perception as she's fairly aware of her close surroundings and one endurance represents the frail nature of this build and will ensure that being compromised is definitely something that you don't want. The assassin might be able to kick ass but she can't take a lot of hits. She has a high pain tolerance mentally but not physically. Her body would just give out under heavy force. One charisma represents the fact that the assassin is not the best in conversation, and while she did fool her husband that she was a lawyer, this was only through crazy amounts of mental conditioning and using techniques drilled into her by the organization. All these low stats are going to allow us to have 10 intelligence, and this is going to make us level really quickly and get access to some really unique perks, and of course this reflects the highly intellectual nature of this build. The assassin will also be able to start with 10 agility, and this is going to allow us to use vats constantly, and therefore fill up the critical meter really fast. It will also give us access to some amazing perks, such as Blitz, which is what is allowing us to basically teleport around the battlefield. The assassin has one luck, as things never seem to go her way by chance, all of her success comes from sheer effort and expertise. Now let's cover all of the awesome perks that we're going to be getting all the way from the start of the game to level 50. We explain perks up to level 50 for most of our Fallout 4 builds, and then from then on, the choices will be up to you. At level 1, we're going to get one of the most fundamental perks for the Assassin's playstyle, and that is the Blitz perk. This increases VAT's melee distance significantly, and when we get rank 2, it's going to increase this distance more and make you do more damage the further you are away from your target. Blitz is perfect for this build as it allows you to use VATs to zip around and silently kill whole rooms of people. It also allows you to avoid the damage you'll be taking running up to your targets. And because this build is fragile, this is is crucial. Furthermore, when there is a space that enemies could detect you in between you and your target, you can use Blitz to teleport over to your target and therefore avoid detection from your enemies who might have seen you if you just ran through that space. At level 3, you're going to be getting the Ninja Perk which will make your ranged sneak attacks do 2.5 times as much sneak attack damage, but more importantly, it will make your melee sneak attacks do 4 times as much sneak damage. At rank 2, ranged sneak attacks do 3 times as much, and the final rank of this is 3 5 times as much. I say this now because it's not very relevant for this build, so I won't be talking about it later. What matters is, is that when we get rank 3 of Ninja, our stealth melee attacks will do 10 times as much normal damage, which is huge. At level 4, we're getting this sneak perk, and then at level 5, we're getting the second rank. With two ranks of sneak, our assassin build is going to be 30% harder to detect while sneaking, and you'll no longer trigger floor-based traps. Do keep in mind that an enemy mine doesn't count as a 
floor-based trap. Next up, we're getting the first rank of big leagues to cause 20% more damage with our melee weapons, and then we're getting the first rank of armorer to start working towards some stealthy looking gear. You should definitely have the perception bobblehead by now, and you'll need it because we're then getting the first rank of locksmith so we can open advanced locks. At level 9, we're getting the first rank of hacker, allowing us to unlock advanced terminals. Now that we've got a solid foundation in sneaking, hacking, lockpicking, and stabbing, it's time to get a really fun perk at level 10 called Robotics Expert. This will allow us to hack robots and even turn them off or initiate self-destruction. This perk has the potential to give you a massive advantage in battle, and at the third rank, you can give a robot specific commands. Imagine how powerful it is to have full control over a sentry bot or an assaultron. To hack a robot, it will have to be non-hostile, and if it is hostile, you will have to be undetected. This perk is also useful because robots tend to have a higher damage resistance, so this allows us to take them out of the fight without needing an energy damage alternative. The assassin will be then getting the second rank of big leagues to do 40% more damage with her melee weapons and have a chance to disarm her opponents. This is really helpful using smaller, faster weapons because more hits means more chance for the disarm to occur. At level 12, we're getting the third rank of sneak and now we will no longer trigger enemy minds. And most importantly, we will be 40% harder to detect while sneaking. Then we're getting the second rank of armorer so we can improve our armor even more. And then we're getting the second rank of hacker, giving the assassin access to expert level terminals. Following this, we're getting locksmith rank two to be able to open expert locks. And then we're getting the second rank of ninja so that our melee stealth attacks will do five times as much damage. As you can see, ninja is one of the perks that makes the assassin such a powerful build. Then we're getting a perk which is great for lower endurance characters who don't really use power armor, and that is the Nerd Rage perk. This basically works like a safety net for the assassin. If you are compromised and your health falls below 20%, time will slow down and you'll gain plus 20 damage resistance and you'll do 20% more damage while the effect lasts. This is really useful when you're about to die and you need to finish off an opponent, and it's also great if you just need to get the hell out of there. That said, it's best that this perk doesn't activate often. You want to be a master of not getting caught. For more information about what characters this perk is useful for, we'll leave a video in the description that we made about Nerd Rage. At level 18, we're getting the third rank of Locksmith to be able to open Master Locks, and then at level 19, and also level 20, we're going to be putting perk points into Luck. This will allow us to build up towards some awesome perks for storing critical hits and being able to use VATs even more. At level 21, you'll want to get Hacker 3 so you can unlock Master Terminals, and now you can lockpick and hack your way through anything. We won't be getting rank 4 for these perks as we didn't think it was worth it for this build. We're then getting the second rank of the Robotics Expert perk and this will allow the assassin to incite a robot to attack after it has been successfully hacked. We're then getting the fourth rank of Sneak to be 50% harder to detect while sneaking and running will no longer negatively affect your stealth. We're then sinking another perk point into luck and then at level 25 we're going to get Pickpocket. This makes picking pockets 25% easier and we think this this perk goes very well with the assassin build. Now I'll be honest, it's mainly for fun and role playing, but you can use it purposefully too. Later on when we get the higher ranks, we'll be able to steal weapons from enemies and also plant live grenades on them. So next we're getting the third rank of armorer to improve our armor even further, and then the second rank of pickpocket, which will make pickpocketing 50% easier and allow you to place a live grenade in a person's inventory. This tactic will draw a lot of attention your way, but if you're in a cramped area and there's an enemy you can go behind, you can plant a live grenade on them and then they will blow up and also kill enemies who may have been out of range. Reach. This is mainly just really, really fun. We're then getting Big Leagues 3 to do 60% more melee damage and have a bigger chance of disarming our targets. And then we're getting the second and final rank of the Blitz perk. This will increase your VAT's melee distance even further and make you do even more damage the longer your Blitz distance is. So if you attack enemies from the furthest distance possible, you'll be dealing the highest damage you can. 
On top of the sneak attack multiplier from Ninja, this makes the assassin a swift and dangerous opponent. We're then getting the third rank of pickpocket to make pickpocketing 75% easier and allow you to steal equipped weapons from enemies. If you slash someone and they don't die, which they probably will, it's really funny if they turn around to fight you without any weapons. Pickpocket rank 3 can also provide for some fun gameplay opportunities like stealing an enemy's melee weapon and then killing them with it. At level 31, we're going to get the second rank of Nerd Rage so that when your health falls below 20% and time slows, you'll now gain a solid plus 30 damage resistance and plus 30% more damage. As I said, you don't really want this to happen, but because this build is relatively frail, it will allow you to slaughter many opponents when things get tough. We're then going to get the first rank of Action Girl, and this will make the Assassin's action points regenerate 25% faster. Overall, this just allows for more VATs, more Blitz, more criticals and more sprinting because you'll find yourself with more of your action points to use. Next, we're getting the ultimate third rank of ninja and this allows us to deal 10 times as much damage when using stealth melee strikes and this really takes this build to a whole new level. For the next three levels of having fun with your all crazy powerful perks, you're going to be investing perk points into luck. You'll also want to have picked up the luck bobblehead by now because we're getting the first rank of Grim Reaper's sprint. This means that any kill you get in VATS has a 15% chance to restore all action points. And because you'll be using Blitz all of the time, most of your kills will be in VATS. The goal with this perk is to allow you to keep streaming VATS Blitz kills in stealth mode for long periods of time. We're then getting the final rank of Sneak, and this means when you engage stealth, distant enemies will actually lose track of you. This is very useful for escaping an unfortunate situation, becoming hidden once again, and then coming back to finish off the job. We're then getting the second rank of Grim Reaper's Sprint at level 39, and now the chance for any VATS kill to restore all your action points goes up to a very useful 25%. We're then getting the fourth and last rank of Armorer to essentially let us do whatever the hell we want to do with our armor in Fallout 4. Now you'll be able to have a fully upgraded set of sturdy, shadowed, well-modified leather armor. We are then getting the Critical Banker perk, and for those of you who aren't familiar with this, it allows us to store an additional critical hit to use in VATS. After getting rank 2, which we will do next, we will be able to store two critical hits. This will basically let you stream critical hit after critical hit, and alongside all the constant Blitz action and Grim Reaper's sprint, this works beautifully. We're then getting the fourth rank rank of big leagues to deal 80% more damage with our melee weapons and also hit all targets in front of you in one swipe. We're then getting the final rank of robotics expert and this means that once we've successfully hacked a robot, we can now give it specific commands. We're then getting the third rank of critical banker and this allows us to store another critical hit and banking a critical now has a chance to save an additional critical hit. Next we get the third rank of grim reaper's sprint and with this, the chance to restore all of our vats points becomes 35% with each kill we get in VATS and we now have a chance to completely fill our critical meter. At level 47, we're getting the final rank of Action Girl so that our action points regenerate 50% faster. And then following this, we get the final rank of Big Leagues. For those of you who don't know, the final rank of Big Leagues is bugged in the sense that it will say your weapons have gone back to base damage, but the damage and effects from the perk aren't actually glitched. It's just a problem with the display. Basically, this rank is going to make you do double damage with your melee attacks and also have a chance to cripple your opponent or slash their head clean off. We then get the fourth rank of pickpocket and this will make pickpocketing twice as easy and you could now steal equipped items, not just weapons. This is basically the equivalent of Skyrim's perfect touch perk, so if you wanna go around and take everyone's clothes off, then go for it. You can also remove enemy armor so their damage resistance drops before you kill them, but with the ninja perk, you can probably kill them without having to risk being detected. Though there is also one very niche, but also very powerful application of this perk. One effective way you can use pickpocket is to steal fusion cores straight from an enemy in a suit of power armor, causing them to exit the armor and fall prey to your stealth attacks. Finally, at level 50, we're getting the final rank of Nerd Rage, and this will give you the ultimate safety net, giving you plus 40 damage resistance and making you deal a huge 40% extra damage when your health drops below 20%, which also causes time to slow. Again, this is fantastic for this more vulnerable build, particularly because it allows you to quickly dominate your attackers or easily get away.
The end game special stats for the assassin, including all of the bobbleheads, are as follows. 4 Strength, 4 Perception, 2 Endurance, 2 Charisma, 11 Intelligence, 11 Agility, and 8 Luck. So now you know the Assassin's story and how to create her, but we haven't looked at the gear. Gear is going to be explained as early game, mid game, and end game, and this refers more to your level as opposed to main storyline progress. Remember, you'll want some sort of ranged backup weapon to take out enemies that are never in melee range, such as activated roof turrets. This character uses armored protection in case she is compromised and it makes her look like a really cool hardcore assassin. The armor for the assassin is going to benefit her stealth by making her harder to detect and move faster in sneak mode. Looking at the early game gear, you're going to want to get yourself some road leathers to wear under your armor pieces and we've chosen to have this under our armor for the entire game, but if you prefer something else that fits in with the aesthetic of this build, then go for it. On top of your road leathers, you're going to want to get a full set of basic leathers leather armor. Yes, it's leather on leather. Very kinky, I know. It's also going to be all black. Next, you'll have to customize your leather to make it shadowed and make the legs muffled. Now your armor will look black and improve stealth in dark areas. The muffled mold will be used on the legs to reduce your movement sound so that enemies cannot hear you. You can put whatever you want on the arms and chest for the time being. You're also going to want to head to your local plastic surgeon and get some awesome face paint for an additional role-playing element. Face paint would make you harder to identify, but very importantly, it would scare the shit out of your targets. You'll also want to go to a hairdresser and get the haircut called Unladylike. You can't pick this in the pre-war section, so you'll have to get this in the wasteland to blend in with the rougher types of post-apocalyptic Boston. If you want to take role-playing even further, you can use a variety of clothes for blending in with different people in various areas. You can carry an assortment of dresses and outfits for this purpose. And if you're willing to spend the caps, you could even constantly change, remove, and reapply your face paint. I guess you could even do it like Deacon and change your face. In terms of weapons, you can carry additional melee weapons if you like, but we think the Pikmin's Blade is the weapon for the Assassin. This is a unique combat knife with a stealth blade modification, and it does a really good amount of damage, plus it causes 25 points of bleeding damage per strike on top of this. You can get this relatively early on in the game, and if you don't know where it is, we've made a guide for you which you will find in the description. This will be your main weapon for the entire higher game, but before you pick it up, you'll want to go with a switchblade, which you can find on the table, next to a blue container, on the stairwell, nearby the fusion core in the Museum of Freedom, where you first encounter Preston Garvey. Also, while you're in Good Neighbor starting the Pikmin's Blade quest, you could also do the Silver Shroud quest and get the Silver Shroud costume. This will give you an extra outfit if you want to make your assassin get into role-playing. When it comes to the mid-game gear, you're going to want to change all of your normal leather pieces to sturdy leather and we're not going to be using any heavy leather pieces. You're going to want to make this all shadowed and put muffled again on the legs to reduce your movement sound. On all of the other pieces, you're going to want the ultra light modification and this makes your armor weigh less and gives you more action points to use. This makes the assassin even better with vats and general sprinting. It would also be really great if you could become invisible with the press of a button and thankfully, because this is Fallout, you can. So pick up all the stealth boys so you can use them for the trickiest and most challenging challenging situations you come across. This is of course not restricted to mid-game gear, using stealth boys whenever you need it at the end or the very beginning of the game. When it comes to weapons, you're still going to be using Pikmin's Blade, as it is just so fantastic, but perhaps you'll want to mix things up and use Krem's Tooth for some poison damage and a fresh aesthetic. We've made a video on where you can get this awesome looking sacrificial machete and you'll find a link to it in the description. Looking at the end game gear, you're going to have the same set of sturdy leather armor over the top of road leathers or anything else you'd rather underneath, and you're going to want the same modifications on the arms and torso, but on the legs you're going to want to get the sleek modification once you have armor of 4, and this will increase your sneak movement speed, allowing you to move faster in sneak mode, which basically means you'll get more kills faster while being stealthy and also get away from enemy sights quicker than before. Keep in mind that with the high ranks of sneak, fast movement won't make you easier to detect. Remember to carry rank random pieces of clothing if you want to roleplay blending into the wasteland as something else. And if you choose the alternate faction we said this build can be adapted to, you could get armored clothing. You could even get armored military fatigues to wear under your armor pieces to be ridiculously OP. 
I actually talk about this in our best armor rating video, which will of course be in the description for those who are interested. Looking at endgame weapons, Pikmin's Blade is still a sensational choice, and like I said, you can use Krem's Tooth as well. Shemdrown's Sword can also look cool if you want to mix things up, but again, Pikmin's Blade is going to be your main squeeze. Synth Relay Grenades are also an awesome addition to this build if you have access to them by joining the faction we recommended. And if you've joined the other faction we suggested, perhaps you'll want to use the Deliverer as your back up gun for targets out of melee range. Maybe you just want a silenced 10mm pistol, but the choice is yours. You won't be using it very much anyway. Looking at the companion choices for the assassin, she is one to prefer being alone, but X688 works pretty well. After you max affinity with him, you'll get the shield harmonics perk, which gives you plus 20 energy resistance, and of course he fits in well with the whole idea of achieving prosperity through acts others would deem inhumane. If you made the other faction choice, you could use Deacon as a companion, and you can max his affinity to get the cloak and dagger perk. This grants you 20% more sneak attack damage, which is fantastic for this build, and it also increases stealth boy duration by 40%. Even if you side with the faction we recommended, you can still go and get Deacon to begin with and max his affinity before any endgame choices are made. When it comes to settlements, the assassin tends to not use any. She doesn't like having a place where she can be compromised, and she believes it's not effective to spend all her time helping others. When she needs a bed or storage, she's got it at a headquarters of the faction she sides with. And that, my friends, concludes this week's Fallout 4 build, The Assassin. Thank you very much for watching, and remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other Fallout 4 builds we've got coming. Share this video if you think it deserves it, and leave a like if you love this assassin. Fudge Muppet's social media links are in the description for anyone who happens to be interested, and of course, all guides you might need for this build are there too. My name is Scott, this was The Assassin. Subscribe and tune in for when I nerd out with you all again next time.